a new documentary by Henry Louis Gates Jr. titled The Black Church on PBS. I came across talk on the internet about the documentary devoting a segment to First African Baptist Church in Savannah, Georgia, but I'd like to show a relevant portion of that teaser or of that clip here. This building has so many symbols in it that are codes for various things mm -hmm. in the windows, in the ceiling, on the side of the pews. After long days of labor, the free and enslaved members of First African Baptist work through the night to create a home in which to worship their God. The people who built these pews paid homage to Christ, but also left a surprising trace of another African religious past, Islam. Did you see the specific pew that the clip ended on? You know, I'd like to look at that portion at the end one more time and focus in on the relevant pew. The people who built these pews paid homage to Christ, but also left a surprising trace of another African religious past, Islam. So what intrigued me about that is that as Gates alludes to traces of Islam, being left on the pews, the clip stops on the exact pew that I had proposed an Arabic reading for about 16 months ago. Uh, to make this more clear, I'd like to rotate the image 90 degrees to the left and then zoom in on the markings. Uh, in my hypothetical case for Arabic on a pew, I had proposed that one could argue the markings resemble the Arabic phrase ilahi nas, which means the God of mankind and happens to be a line from the last chapter of the Quran. As the clip not only calls those markings Arabic, but more specifically Islamic, specifically Quranic text appears on that pew. By the way, we now know how Gates came to the conclusion that Arabic appears on that particular pew. Was he simply deferring to people in the church who take the position that Arabic appears on the pews? No. Was he influenced by previous arguments? No. It turns out that he flew in a scholar from Harvard who took a fresh look at the pew and independently of anyone else also concluded that Arabic appears on that pew. In 1773 in Savannah, Georgia, the first African Baptist church was formed. And I went there and I filmed. And, you know, there is in the balcony uh, on a pew inscribed, carved in, into the wood, an odd language, right? And nobody knew what it said. So we flew down a linguist from Harvard to translate it. And he looked at it, and it's Arabic. Wow. It's Arabic, man. It was like, that's just to underscore the uh, high degree of Muslims who were part of the enslaved population. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. three years before the American Revolution. The church's website began to publicly state that Arabic appeared on the pews nearly three years ago. Uh, however, to my knowledge, the church never made a public case in favor of that position. They simply asserted it. And uh, in the absence of a public argument in favor of their position, some certain persons openly called for, you know, they, some people were openly calling that claim false and were even accusing proponents of that view of being part of some sort of nefarious agenda. Right. But now the agenda is trying to classify this as Arabic. This is not Arabic. <laughs> I'm saying that to you so that way you guys can understand they are trying to erase history right now. As part of a discussion on a proper methodology for presenting a case for language on the pews, I offered a hypothetical, emphasis on hypothetical, a hypothetical case for Arabic on a pew uh, merely as a thought experiment. And, you know, in the months since then, I've refined the argument a bit more in, in subsequent videos. But it should be noted that endorsing the appearance of Arabic on the pews does not necessitate that one therefore deny that any other language on the you know appears on the pews and uh, i think that's an important point to make and it's a you know at least in 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 the interest of fairness and this is a point which has been made by uh, orthodox moore in his two recent videos on the pews uh while i don't think uh, we have the exact same conclusions on the subject i i still would you know recommend 
that others interested in the topic check out his videos as I honestly feel they brought a refreshingly nuanced approach to the subject. I really enjoyed his videos uh, and he's the person who argues for the at least the possibility of multiple languages appearing on the pews and therefore his position is that you know the presence of arabic on the pews does not rule out or exclude the possibility of other languages appearing on the pews before i end the video i want to say that although i personally continue to remain skeptical about you know claims of, of language appearing on the pews it's still worth noting that the likely reason that the case for arabic on the pews has made it all the way to a pbs documentary is because the case for arabic is honestly, you know, the case for Arabic honestly thus far has been stronger than the respective cases for other languages. Uh, you know, irrespective of what any of our positions might be on the markings on the pews, I still think that if we're honest, we have to concede that Arabic so far, now maybe things can change in the future, but so far, Arabic has had the strongest case uh, insofar that it's the only language for which at least one known scholar has backed a coherent, historically attested phrase appearing on one of the pews. On that note, God bless. Uh, uh, so those writings on those pews is a Shemitic language. It's not Arabic, because if it was so, then how come they still haven't translated? Yeah, if you're not someone who's trained, you can make it seem as though it's Arabic, but it's not actually Arabic. Okay, so let's we done with all this conversation about Arabic. Okay, thanks. So at this point, I think all of y'all, all of y'all old Pastor Kelly an apology. What? Not only do I think all of y'all old Pastor Kelly an apology publicly, the same way you did those videos refuting the pews and it being Arabic, y'all need to issue a public apology and you need to delete all of your videos because those videos are false. Bro, what are you talking about, man? And we got confirmation as well far as uh, um, of what, uh, that, that there's no Arabic on the pews. I can definitely or definitively say that it's not Arabic. Moray Brown with um, uh, Professor Katz, it's, he gave him definitive answers, to, made it clear there is no Arabic on the pews. You can't get away from that. Getting back to the subject of multiple people proposing Arabic for the pews, it's worth noting that as that as some know, Henry Louis Gates' recent documentary for PBS titled The Black Church had a brief segment in which a linguist from Harvard looked at the pews and concluded that at least Arabic script, Arabic writing, appeared on the markings. He didn't necessarily endorse Arabic language, and that's a, an important distinction. The people who built these pews paid homage to Christ but also left a surprising trace of another African religious past, Islam. This is Arabic type of writing. Hmm. It's amazing that it survived. Oh, yes. I'm sure that if Christians knew that it was a Muslim, they would have just painted it over. Or or <laughs> maybe, maybe. But those who also wrote this, they may be Christian themselves. Hmm. But for them, Religion is a continuity. Different ways of maybe worship, but it's the same God, the same principle. And it was written to be a legacy for the future generation. Now, again, I'm not saying you have to agree with this gentleman in that clip, Bubakar Diakite, but the point is that it's not just scholars under the influence of my emails who are reaching the conclusion that Arabic appears on at least one, some of the pews or at least one of the pews. You know, some who are quite familiar with Arabic and who, are, who I personally have had no contact with also reach that conclusion or at least similar conclusions. So, you know, Dr. Kelly's representation of this subject was... Uh, the, less than accurate, to put it mildly, with all due respect to our, our gentle friend, the good doctor. I'm not a doctor, but I play one on TV. Dr. Kelly also appealed to Richard Saracen's statements in that same documentary, Cryptic Quest. Mm -hmm. So let's play that portion of Dr. Kelly's recent video. Well, then that would look like a cursive top. As that's, it is, that's right. as, it, as it is, yeah. It also, I have to see this closer up, but it also looks like a close up. Okay. However, however, nothing else on this yeah. panel really looks like a Hebrew. When you have something that, that looks like a Hebrew letter, it's in a context of things that don't look like Hebrew letters. So that the, the, the issue 
it, again, the issue is not the individual sign, it's, it's what the signs are up to. With all due respect to our beloved friend, Dr. Kelly, I fear that he may have missed the nuance of what Professor Saracen was attempting to say, what he was saying. You know, Professor Saracen was essentially saying the same thing that I've been saying since 2019 and even before that. But as far as my video is concerned, it's been, this is the same thing I've been saying. Certain markings may resemble Hebrew characters. I took that position from the beginning. But that alone does not demonstrate Hebrew is actually present. You need a coherent string of characters to conclude that Hebrew is present. You know, preferably a phrase, you know, otherwise it's very much an open-ended question and it's yet to be demonstrated. But here, listen to this portion again. Listen again to what uh, Professor Richard Saracen said. You know, when you have something that, that looks like a Hebrew letter, it's in a context of things that don't look like don't Hebrew letters. Mm -hmm. So that the, the, the issue, it, again, the issue is not the individual sign. It's, it's what the signs add up to. And this again brings us to the question of whether Dr. Kelly is using even scales. If markings resembling individual Hebrew characters is sufficient for concluding Hebrew is present, then so too markings resembling individual Arabic characters should likewise be sufficient for concluding Arabic is present. But Again, it seems that our friend, the good doctor, has two different standards. It's a rather obvious double standard. We have further clarification now. Garfield Reed actually wrote to him for clarification, and this was the message that Professor Saracen wrote back. Quote, Dear Mr. Reed, please forgive me for not getting back to you in a timely fashion. I also had a lot on my plate over the past three weeks. Reverend Alvin Elmore in Chicago had introduced me to the pew markings in the First African Baptist Church a little over six years ago, and I had a chance to inspect them in person when my wife and I were in Savannah in May of 2015. There is no question in my mind that the carvings on the pews are intentional and are meant to be a kind of script. They are not Hebrew, though some individual markings are similar to the formation of some Hebrew letters. There are no Hebrew words discernible there. Some of the markings bear some similarity to Arabic script, but here too I can't find anything consistent, though I am not fluent in Arabic. Still, Arabic is written entirely horizontally and all of the letters in a single word are conjoined. I did not find that consistently on the pews either. My memory of your email was jogged just now when my wife and I were watching PBS's documentary series, The Black Church, This Is Our Story, This Is Our Song, on PBS streaming. We missed the live airing uh, last month, which includes a brief segment on the First African Baptist Church. There, one of Henry Louis Gates Jr.'s informants, unidentified, indicates that the glyphs on the pews are Arabic and attest to the African Muslim heritage of some of the congregants. That is certainly likely with respect to the background and intent of those who carved these glyphs into the pews. But once again, I do not believe that there are any discernible or decipherable Arabic words there. Regrettably, I could not have sustained a 45 to 90 minute interview with you on this topic. My reading of the glyphs on the pews is contained in its entirety in the two paragraphs above and is likely to have disappointed some of your listeners. Still, as I noted, I have no doubt that these carvings are intentional and were someone's or more than one person's perhaps attempts to stimulate to simulate cursive writing, whether of Arabic or, or of English. I doubt that they would have experienced Hebrew script. This is the conclusion that I shared with Reverend Elmore as well. Uh, it was a privilege to have spent time in this beautiful historical and sacred space in Savannah, a testament to the faith of its founders and worshipers, both then and now. May its members go from strength to strength. With my very best wishes and embarrassed apologies for the delay, Richard Saracen, end quote. So that settles that. It, it's very clear that Dr. Richard Saracen, Professor Richard Saracen, likewise, like me, said that some of the markings look like, you know, Hebrew cursive characters, but he doesn't think Hebrew actually appears on the pews, okay? So there's a difference between saying this marking resembling, resembles a character from the script and saying that meaningful language, you know, appears on the pew. 